All right, everyone, welcome back. This is game number three here between Nesty and Braddock, and game number two, I do not even know what to say. That was intense, so intense. We just saw, you know, a pretty, it felt like a normal macro game. We were seeing Braddock move into mech play, and then all of a sudden, he had like 100 Ravens. <laughs> no, honestly, he ended up getting like 20 plus Ravens. And Nesty, did, he didn't have a response. There was nothing he could do. Now, it wasn't just the Ravens. He had a lot of supporting fire from Siege Tanks and Hellions as well. But that was it. He made that transition from a normal mech style of play, Hellion, Siege Tank, and Thor, right into Heavy Raven with light mech support. And there was literally nothing that Nesty could do. Nesty did a very good job of trying to hit Braddock in multiple places with those roaches. However, once that Raven Force and even just a couple of Siege Tanks and Hellions caught up to those roaches, the roaches got taken out. Massive auto turret spam. The coolest thing about the Raven, of course, is he just use up, uses up energy and then regenerates it. And the, the point defense drone plus the auto turret and seeker missile made it so that corruptors weren't a good response. And what I mean, I, it's it's baffling. I I really can't think of what he could have done to deal with that. That was a very difficult situation. The biggest thing, really, is that had Nest been able to more effectively mess up uh, the economy of Braddock, then he would have been in a better spot. Now that's not to go without giving credit to Nest because Nest tried to do that, but he he had to contend with those those. Um, why can't I even think right now? He had to contend with those planetary fortresses and that mass SCV repair. He did what he was supposed to do. He tried to mess up the economy. You know, if you're going a mech style play and especially a Raven heavy style play, which God again, that I, that's that's that was the craziest game I've ever seen. But the biggest thing is that it's so resource dependent. It's so Vespian de dependent. So as a Zerg player, your focus is let me mess up his economy. He can't afford this, and then I win. But, man, those planetary fortresses and those mass repairs basically just bought Braddock just enough time to defend those bases long enough for the Raven Force to catch up and then just mop up all the roaches. That was nuts. That game was unbelievable. I, I can't even believe it. Hopefully I did a decent job commentating. We got to the late stage of the game, and I was like, I just do not know what's going on. We've got one Marine popping out right now for Braddock. Braddock does have one refinery up, so everything is looking fairly standard from him. We should be seeing a factory coming out very shortly. And that should be getting dropped right about now. There it is. Braddock is coming out with that factory. Let's see if he decides to get a reactor here on this barracks or not. Hmm. No, no, he is not. Very interesting indeed. We will be seeing a wall off either with a command center, because he will be going for a quick expand, or we'll be seeing another depot get placed up here. Now, I've got one Marine and an SCV down here trying to do a little bit of damage. Actually, we'll be seeing a little bit of attempted aggression here from Braddock. Rack not trying to actually do a lot of damage. He can't because he didn't open up two racks. Just one rack's worth of Marines really won't do a lot of damage. What he is trying to do, he's trying to force Nest T to overreact. Possibly come out with six or eight Zerglings instead of the normal two to four. Or the other overreaction he could do, of course, is build a ton of spine crawlers. Now he has got one spine crawler coming out, and he's also got four Zerglings. Now I, I actually expect normally Nest T to just come out with two Zerglings. That's what I'm typically seeing from him. So even just getting the spine plus those two extra, that's a that's a small bit of an overreaction. It's nothing huge, it's nothing completely devastating, but it's small. Um, and again, as you can see, there's no reinforcements coming out here either for uh, for Braddock because he doesn't expect to do a lot of damage. Again, he was just trying to force an ST to respawn. That's about it. You can see right now an ST getting just close enough to that bunker. That's actually going to force Braddock to salvage the bunker and just head back home with those Marines, um, realizing again that he's not going to be able to do much damage. Now, here come out those Hellions. Nice blocking there of that Zergling, stopping him from getting up and actually being able to scout out those production buildings and their attachments. However, we do have another Zergling right there. And he might be moving in shortly to actually check that for good. Two Marines heading back right now. Here's the expansion to open up a uh, Hellion opening into expand as well. Also, stim pack research coming out for those Marines. And right now, Nessie an should hopefully just be macroing up. It looks like he will be doing that. I don't see a Roach worn out or anything like that. He's obviously halfway through to that metabolic boost. So we'll just be droning up right now. Let's take a look at this batch. Yes, that batch of larva going straight to drones. That's a very smart decision of him. Try to get up that economy, get a nice strong econ, and, and then, you, then you're pretty much good to go. We got some Hellions moving out across the map right now for Braddock. We'll be scouting, but most importantly, trying to contain Nesty. Nesty, however, does have this one Zergling over here. Now, he had that second Zergling. That got taken out. Uh, I don't know if he ended up getting any scouting done, unfortunately. And, oh, the Hellions able to sneak on in there. And I think he got a couple of kills. Only getting one kill, actually. Only one worker kill. Now, sitting at the center of the map with six Hellions. No more coming out. 
Fusion. There we go. Gonna be seeing uh, that drop down. He's got another reactor coming out. Should be seeing another Rax coming out over there and another Rax over there as well. I think after that, he'll just actually be doing a hot swap with this uh, with this barracks here and then be getting a tech lab on that factory. So I expect this Rax to go to that reactor, churning out hefty amounts of Marines and then start to switch into some tank production. Overlord scouting up up top over here. Very nice, very nice indeed. Braddock not able to scout it as you can see that Overlord in a nice hidden position. Uh, one Marine there able to take out the Zergling, getting that one hero kill. We get the Speedling moving on over here and he will be used for some secondary scouting. First tucked away into the corner over there. And what's going on? Macro hatch over here. We got a layer coming out. Evolution chamber as well. Is that Evo chamber up front? Yes, it is. Also, another actually, wow, this is gonna be a second evolution chamber. So again, you can see this. The whole purpose of this is to stop Hellions from being so effective. That's basically the point behind the building placement that we are seeing here from uh, from our buddy in ST. Back over here inside of the main base for Braddock Stim Research now finished. Level one uh, upgrades there for his infantry units about halfway, a little bit over halfway finished. So he'll be getting those out shortly. And we also have a starport coming into play. We'll be seeing another reactor built on this factory. So still not use, utilizing this for tanks. Uh, he will be going straight up into double medevacs there. And then after the point, I expect that tank, uh, that tank switch to eventually come out. And again, still scouting out here in ST, nice and happy, spotting in this position for the moment. Expansion now up for Braddock. He is getting that saturated. Hellion's moving back towards the expansion. Actually, check in. He just wanted to spot that high yield to see if there's anything fancy going on there. We've got two Marines over here. The one Zergling just completely bypassing them. And he will be moving up, trying to get some scouting. However, he's going to be walking straight into a death trap of Marines. Look at that fancy footwork there. Able to uh, just barely stay out of the range of those Marines. And here comes that sacrificial Overlord Scout. And again, of course, at this point, Nesty is just wanting to see how much info he can get. We also, the Zergling's getting ready to break down those rocks as Nesty prepares to move his way into that next expansion. Overlord Scout, what is he going to see? So far, just seeing heavy ranks. He's got the research coming there on the tech lab, so he probably knows. Okay, Stimpak and or Combat Shield coming out. And again, there are those double medevacs. Still hasn't worked into that tank transition. Just going to be working with Stim Marines. Uh, probably going to be seeing some dropping now, actually. Yep, yeah, here we go. Braddock getting ready to move across the map and do a little bit of harass here against his opponents, Nest T. Nest T again working his way into that third. We've got a Baneland Nest in play. We've got a Spire in play as well. Level one upgrades coming out for those air units. He's going to be working into some Mutalus now four and number five coming on through. So as he prepares to get Mutas, Braddock is preparing to push himself. Lots of Marines, Combat Shield, Stim Pack, and level one weapons upgrade. This could be a quite effective push indeed. We've got quite a few Banelings in play though. That is something that Braddock spotted. He had a scan there, was able to see those Banelings coming on down. That's concerning. That is very concerning indeed for Braddock. He's got to be careful. Even with Stimpak, that heavy amount of Banelings, uh, it's very hard to micro away and against that, especially once you throw Speedlings into the mix that are able to stop your Marines from microing back. Braddock is preparing his way into his third expansion. In addition to that, finally making that transition into tank play, so Marine tank. It's going to be that overall composition we will be seeing from him. Armory coming into play as well. That's going to allow some additional upgrades there for the, uh, the for his bio units. Able to sneak on up, unfortunately not able to stop that missile turret from being constructed. There's certainly enough turrets right now inside of Braddock's base to deter those mutas from pushing in. Early on in the game, said it in the past, we'll continue to say it, small amounts of mutas are very fearful of small amounts of marines and missile turrets. Missile turrets are very effective against those small number of mutalists. Way too many marines in the middle of the map for those mutas to deal with. We've got a few more mutas coming out, but primarily seeing lots of speedlings. Centrifugal hooks getting upgraded there for those beanlings, making them that much quicker. Also, the level one air upgrades almost finished. Level two melee upgrades coming on through as well for an ST. Now we've got what over here? A couple Hellions sitting over here. One Marine over there. One Marine at that tower. Mutas continue to dance around the map, doing scouting and trying to harass a little bit. They really haven't been able to do much damage at all. Neither player really doing too much damage. An ST overall has lost the most, but still hasn't been that bad. Each player's only lost one worker, actually, so not too awful. We've got an ST coming out with some hefty expansions, number three and four moving out right now. That's pretty much necessary, though, because we have Braddock moving into his third at that high yield. Uh, so if an ST wasn't on four bases, then he would be starting to hurt pretty quickly. Now, a little bit of harass going down over there from those Mutalists, able to do a little bit of damage. Don't think. Okay, he killed off one worker. Congratulations. I think he also stopped the production of a missile turret, but that, is, that was it. 
This expansion now up will be saturated there by Nest T. Centrifugal hooks just finishing. Level 2 air upgrades uh, coming out for Nest T. We've got Siege Tech almost finished over here for Braddock. In addition to that, we've got some uh, Terran Vehicle Level 1 upgrades and the Level 2 Weapons upgrades coming out for his infantry units. Free Hellion kills here for Nest T. Again, take advantage of these small little victories whenever possible. You can see that setting Braddock slightly behind. And the center of the uh, map control right now shifting from Braddock to Nest as those two Marines get dropped to the Mutilus. So Braddock and Nest both players just macroing up right now. Speedling Bailing Muta is, of course, what we are seeing here from Nest Would like to see that transition into Hive Tech, although he can hold off on that at the moment. Doesn't necessarily need that right now. Would be really cool to see some Infestors come into play, but he's apparently content right now with Speedling Baneling Muta, and that can certainly be very effective. Slowly working up those Muta numbers. He's got two more about to pop, 17 already in play. So as you start to get to 20 plus, those Mutas get very strong, and you have enough to snipe out turrets and then continue to push forward and do economic damage. And I'm assuming that this is the slow, methodical grind that Nest is planning. And as he works those numbers up, he'll actually become more and more effective with that Mutalus Harass. The problem is, though, at the same time, Braddock's able to work up his army. In fact, we're seeing a very nicely placed sensor tower. Look at how much. I mean, that is just so much percentage-wise. That's almost a fourth of the map that he's covering with just one sensor tower. Very, very nice. You basically want to do that right up on your siege line. This is going to allow you to see where Muta and Speedling Harass is coming from and allow you to respond by pulling your marines to where they need to be, essentially. Now, Muta still still have a window to move back here, and he could actually do a bit of damage with that. It looks like he is planning that very thing right now. Got Muta's hunkered in the upper left there. One Hellion scouting out to see if Nesti moves into his fifth. Here go those Mutas right now for Nesti, moving straight on in. First taking out the turret, and then they will be going straight for those SCVs, just trying to get a few kills. Stim Marines will be pushing them back, but still, that's exactly what you need to do here. Nesti just doing a little bit of damage here and there. Ooh, taking this out would be huge. It's going to, yes, he manages to take out one Engineering Bay. That is unbelievable. Absolutely beautiful there. Taking that out, severely delaying the macro of Braddock, hurting his upgrade uh, possibilities. We have a drop coming down over here. That's going to get taken care of. Speedlings and Bailings will be forcing the lift off, and then the Mutas taken out quickly. That medevac, and there you go. So that drop quickly taken care of. Beautiful, beautiful by Nest That is exactly what you need to do. Again, you use Speedlings and Bailings to try to force a Terran player to lift up the Marines, otherwise they would die. And then if he lifts up the Marines, you just walk in with those Mutalists and take out the Medivac, and there you go. So that's a quick response to dealing with uh, any drop harass. That's basically what you need to do. A couple of racks here on the low ground. Now, obviously, this is in danger of getting taken out, but this also helps formulate a wall to help that siege line become that much stronger. We have got a lot of Mutas pushing out in this position, sitting at 22 right now. He's making an Infestor transition. Transition. Also, that Hive Tech's almost finished. Braddock pushing to the center of the map with that siege line. At the same time, though, here come these hefty Muta numbers. Now, there are a few Marines, but not a lot. And honestly, Nesty could quite easily engage that and take them out, no problem. And he's going to be doing a lot of damage, taking out some depots right now. We've got some more missile turrets being constructed. Now, what else is going on? Siege line setting up in the center of the map right now. Braddock pushing very close. He needs to be careful, though, not to spread himself too, too thin. We've got 25 Banelands coming in, already sitting with 28 in, pl in place. So that's going to be 50-plus that we'll be seeing there from Nesty. That is a lot of Banelands. We can also see him splitting up his forces right now. This is going to allow him to converge and hit from multiple angles. Now, as Braddock gets closer and closer, I expect Nesty to be forced to respond and again, splitting up those forces there. A couple guys over here, a couple over here, a couple over here. And then he's got those Mutalists over here. Here comes that slow push from Braddock. He's getting pretty close to overextending himself. Again, needs to be very careful. He's going to be trying to use small groups of Marines to snipe out expansions. We've got some Speedlings and Banelings moving up the backside. The Marines over here will be walking right into some Baneling fire. That's a problem. Banelings taken out. All of the Marines. Here come that Speedling and Baneling counterattack. Muta is now moving into the main as well. This is going to be going straight into that high yield. That's going to get taken out. At the same time, we've got Marines pushing over here, and ST will be losing this expansion. Able to take out all the Banelings over there. Muta's wreaking havoc inside of the main as well. Nesty is doing a lot of economic damage with his counterattack right now. He did end up losing this expansion. It looks like he'll be losing the high yield expansion as well. So he himself is taking some losses, but Nesty is comfortable right now with this trade off. Those Speelings will be taken out now by that Planetary and the small amount of forces over there. Muta still in the main. Look at that, Nest T killing off 53 workers. Braddox still only killed off one. Now, yes, he did take out that expansion, but Nest T was able to pull back with his workers. He will be losing a few there. 
he killed off so many workers. That's a problem for Braddock. That is a huge problem. We had an expansion over here. That got taken out. Can't believe I even missed that. That's ridiculous. Uh, so lots of Marines and tanks continue to push across the map. Nest T uh, is behind in terms of army supply right now. He needs to be careful with the forces he has. He's got Brew Lords in play. Oh, and Braddock is not ready for Brew Lords. We still have Mutas over here. No drops or anything going off inside of the main. And we're just going to see Nest T continue to mount up his forces before he pushes out. He needs to be careful, though. He's taking some losses there to his forces that are just sitting way too close uh, to that tank line. But here come the Brew Lords. That will be forcing the tanks back. The issue is, of course, Braddock forcing splash damage right now from his tanks against his own units. Once those, uh, once those Brew Lords drop those Infestors in play, and this push now coming across the middle, we're going to be seeing those Marines try to stem forward. Fungal growth, though. Very nice. There's enough Brew Lords, I believe, right now to take out these Marines. Microing back, though, and unfortunately not firing at the same time. We get some more Brew Lords coming down over here. Down to just a few. He has only got right now three Brew Lords in play. He's got two more coming out. Lots and lots of Zerglings. We're going to be seeing another counterattack move down over here. Moving straight into that main. We'll be trying to take out some more depots and then just try to pull back. Hopefully we do see uh, Nest T right now try to rebuild some of those bases. Going to be seeing a drop come from over here. Still Nest T again managed to kill off 53 workers. These medevacs get taken out before they can even drop anything. Braddock not paying attention to that. Ends up losing two full medevacs of Marines. Certainly something you do not want to do. We're going to be seeing a couple of Vikings coming to play right now as well. That's actually very good there for Braddock. He's going to need those to deal with those Brew Lords that are in play. We've got a heavy spieling and bailing force that gets scanned there. Braddock knows what he's up against, realizes that is way too much for me to handle, especially considering that he's got a relatively hefty amount of Marauders in play. Marauders are awful against spielings and banelings. The only thing they really do against that is they provide a buffer for his Marines against that Baneling splash damage, but still really not the greatest. Now, what are we looking at in terms of economy right now? Braddock's got a pretty significant advantage, but Nest T coming out with one, two, three expansions. He's got that high yield very close to popping right now, so he's going to be able to get that saturated. The other thing, too, is that Nest T has got control of the center of the map right now, and especially given that we've got tank heavy play here from Braddock, that's not a good thing. Braddock wants to be in the center of the map. Braddock wants that map control with these siege tanks, but this uh, very nice counterattack that we saw from Nest T just ended up doing so much damage to Braddock. It put him so far behind, and Braddock, uh, Braddock is just really hurting right now, sitting back behind the protection of that planter fortress we've got some mutas continue to dance around mutas have been pretty devastating this game uh, sitting nine kills three kills four kills just so much damage here from this cloud of mutas and there uh there we go we got another attempt to drop over here from braddock i don't think he's going to be too successful with that i would really like to see nest t get rid of those rocks that's going to help him deal with this much easier Gamut is now pushing out all of the speedlings and banelings also moving down he's going to be able to deal with this and again that's a problem you got to kill these rocks He's having a hard time against this right now. <laughs> Pushing forward, we'll just be sacrificing some of those meters just to deal with this once and for all. He wants to take it out. A couple of Corruptors now moving out towards to deal with those Vikings. That's not really going to do too much, though. He's got a lot of Marines over here as well. And here comes the massive Spielings and Banelings in the center of the map. And Braddock's not sieged up. That's a problem. Here come the Spielings and Banelings catching those tanks on siege. Getting a full surround. See you later, Siege Tanks. Those get taken out. We'll continue to push against the bio as well. Those bailings popping on those Marines. Taking them out without issue. Braddock forced back to his planetary again. And still, Nesty sitting with map control. And now that all of his expansions are up, he's going to get some nice saturation. He's got some spine crawler to defend against drops as well. And... Pushing up into the expo. This expo is looking to be in a tough spot right now. We've got a lot of banelings. Those speedlings need to be wary though about that planetary fortress. Is he gonna try to push against this? Looks like he might just be using the man uh using those mutas, actually forcing a cancel there. We've got another drop being attempted here by Braddock into the uh, far upper right expansion of an ST, and he might actually be able to take that out, though we've got a lot of speedlings, so hopefully an ST. Should be able to respond by pushing down with his forces. And actually, look at these Brew Lords. The problem is these Brew Lords are very out of position. He's going to need this Infester to protect the Brew Lords against any Vikings that we may be seeing. How many Vikings are in play? Just two in play, though, so not too many. The drop was able to mop up this expansion. ST wasn't able to respond in time with those Speedlings. But again, here comes the push. Banelings moving back. Nice Fungal Growth, allowing him to take out a lot of those Marines. Another Fungal Growth taking out those Marines. The Brew Lords will be able to take out this Expo. He has lost the rest of his forces though and uh, I don't know though if there's enough Marines to actually take that out that expansion gets taken out there by the Brew Lords Brew Lords need to take out those Marines as quick as possible 
He's really in a tough spot. We do have another Brewlord just kind of hiding over here. But there are enough Brewlords to take out the Marines. Some Marine reinforcements, though. Oh, no. Look at that massive speed lanes coming up. Getting a full surround. Saving that one Brewlord. And Nesty mopping up that Expo. Braddock's mining down to pretty much nothing right now. And Nesty fighting his way back into this game. Now, we've got another drop being attempted here by Braddock. I think he may have dropped back here, and I don't know he's, if he's going to do too much damage. Again, we've got that spine crawler action over there. These spine crawlers over here helping to defend. He's going to try to drop in the back, but we've got some Zerglings moving down. Just three Marines aren't going to be enough. Lots of Speedlings and a couple of Brewlords over here. And an ST looks like he has managed to win this game. This is unbelievable. Braddock needs to get rid of these forces on his half of the map and back to mining if he wants to stand a chance. And again, this drop might be able to do a little bit of economic damage, but as long as Nest T is paying attention, he should be able to respond once more. I really wish Nest T got rid of these rocks. That would help his defense so much. Uh, he's just kind of throwing away workers right now, unfortunately. He's coming back with all of his forces, actually. That's hilarious. So, yes, Nest, Nest T uh, just sniping those expansions there with that push is in a pretty dominant position. Now, we're going to be seeing Braddock move out with a counterattack. My concern right now for Braddock, though, is the huge army advantage that we are seeing uh, for Nest T. I want to take a look at those upgrades as well. Uh, Brewlord sitting at 2-2 upgrades. The ground forces sitting at 3-2. We've got 37 Banelings coming out. The Vikings will be trying to snipe those Brewlords, but they got to be careful about those Corruptors. Corruptors are pretty strong against the Vikings unless they're kind of vastly outnumbered. Still seeing some continuous attempted to draw Paras from Braddock's one medevac over here. We're going to be seeing some Marines push forward, taking out those Corruptors. Ooh, but here we go. Uh, ST is getting ready to push up against that, mounting up his forces right now. He has just got so much more then Braddock, he's got such a strong, such a strong force at the moment. Vikings pushing forward, able to get a couple shots off on those Brewlords, and it's just a matter of time until Nest T converges on these forces, and uh, we'll have to see how effective that is. Braddock actually pulling off with some of his forces to try to get a drop off. Now, the only problem with that is that uh, looks like Nest T is aware of this and responding, moving down actually just with the one Zergling. And here we go, Vikings continue to push forward. We do have those Infestors moving forward, getting ready to do attempt a fungal growth. Siege line has been found right there. And here come the Brewlords. Brewlords getting ready to push against that siege line. This drop over here, not sure if that's going to do too much damage. Here come the Brewlords. And then we've got the Speelings and Bands getting ready to get a full surround. Very nice pushing from multiple angles. Microing those Banelings splitting up to hit both groups of Marines. The siege tanks get mopped up. Speelings and Banelings continuing to push against the Marines. Drop over here, getting taken care of from those Banelings. Braddock's drop, not able to do much. Continued Baneling pressure. Marines able to pull back to that planetary fortress. We've got a few Vikings still in the center of the map. The Queens could try to do some damage, but they're not even bothering. There we go, finally doing some damage there to those Vikings. Dropping on the high ground right now. Braddock able to take out an extractor and also do some economic damage over here. Nesty, again, this has been a constant tug of war. Nesty now with control of the center of the map and actually feeling confident now with his forces to push up against this planetary. Is he going to be bypassing it? Yes, he is. Using the Speedlings to bypass the planetary, try to take out some of those priority units, such as that Siege Tank. And he's actually going to be walking right up into the main right now. We still have this drop over here, unfortunately, with those extractors gone, not within range of anything else. A few more Speedlings and Banelings pushing over here. we got a couple Speedlings inside the main base. They will be working to take down some of these attach attachments. Uh, one Brewlord in the center map as well as a couple of those queens banelings moving right up into the main we'll be going straight for those marines i'm assuming there we go going straight for those marines the drop over here still doing nothing unfortunately more and more reinforcements couple more brew lords getting morphed in over here and this is looking pretty good for an st right now uh, Braddock has been able to fend off the forces inside of his base, but there are streaming of units coming across the planetary. Helping out tremendously. Look at that thing. 75 kills right now. That is one baller planetary fortress. Few more Brewlords again getting morphed in in the center of the map. Uh, systematically taking down these, uh, these barracks over here one at a time. This drop has been taken care of. The Marines get taken out, and there it is. Braddock calling the GG. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this series here between Braddock and Nesty. Nesty ended up winning there. Very, very nice play indeed. Hefty speedling. Bailey Force is able to mop up those forces in the center, allowing Nesty to counterattack and then get inside of the main base of Braddock, eventually making for the GG. Another big, big turning point in this game, of course, is the fact that Nest T was able to take out that high yield expansion as well as that expansion in the upper left hand position. Anyways, great series. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy it. As always, if you like the content, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and keep owning.